Good evening or good morning. I will probably end up uploading this video uh, by the time you figure it out in the morning. So yeah, we have um, NPJ's Sean with Blue Ridge Silverhound. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day, evening, morning, breakfast, dinner. But anyways, the topic probably got your attention. A fifteen thousand dollar nineteen eighty two Lincoln set. Are you out of your mind? <laughs> What's the catch? Well, it's real simple. This coin right here, and the coin you're gonna see on the screen, is a mint state sixty nine red by PCGS. A coin in which sold on Stax Bowers Galleries auction. During the ANA event, the middle of August, uh, as a matter of fact, August 14th was when this particular example sold for $15,600. And as opposed to doing just my good old, hey, this thing sold for, you know, fifteen six. let's go ahead and find one. Maybe, maybe it's not just that simple enough to just go out and find it, send it off to a grader and reap the re rewards, I guess. So in this particular case, we're gonna see what it takes to get there. And ultimately, we are gonna find answers to each one of these questions. How is it possible? Okay, number one, how does a basic 1982 Lincoln set, and to kind of clarify, this example is a small date zinc. As you guys know, there's a couple different variants of this particular date. You had the bronze, copper cents that were still being produced in both the large date, small date, in both Philadelphia and Denver mints, with the same with the zinc as well. The only exception is there is no small date Denver copper, okay? There are a few errors in existence that sell for around this dollar value here, but this is just a regular 1982 small date zinc planchet set. All right, so we're gonna look at it. How is it possible? All right, we are gonna try and identify if that's the case. How do you do it? For someone watching this for the first time, maybe you're a beginning coin collector and maybe you're in it for the money. <laughs> I don't know. What, what other reason would there be to you know, a 1982, probably one of the most boringest of Lincoln sent dates, let alone any other day during the 70s and 80s, would fall under boring category, right? We're going to discuss the steps A through Z. How do you get there from the moment you find the coin all the way till you um, consign it with an auction house, okay? There's a few things you need to know. And then the final rubber meets the road question. Should you even attempt it? Should you do this? We're going to discuss all of this here very shortly. Stay tuned. So to help illustrate exactly where we're going with this, okay, sometimes it helps to understand kind of the... Um, I don't know, the ins and outs of coin grading, the populations is also important to know. You gotta know where you stand on all of this. And it takes a lot of research before you just go ahead and simply send off coins to be graded. Is it gonna be worthwhile in the long run? Okay, you need to take a look at and see how much the fees are gonna be, how much the membership is, especially if you're using PCGS. I mean, right out of the gate, it's gonna be at least 100 bucks, all right, for like the gold or silver, silver letter, uh, level. Ugh, it's too late for this. Yeah, but anyways, um, it helps to know all that great stuff. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the coin in question first, the $15,000 Stax Bowers 1982 Lincoln Cent, which sold, it sold for fifteen six. But to kind of simplify it for this particular graph, we're going to use $15,000, okay? So you see on the left-hand side, you see dollar figures from zero, and it goes in increments of five, 10, and then $15,000. Hopefully you guys can see that. And then across the bottom here, you have 12 little dashes, okay, which each represents 
a pop of one, population of one. So for this particular coin, let's say pop one, which simply means that one example is graded as a mint state 69 through PCGS, full red in this particular case. So what I did was I put a dot at 15K at the first example graded. Now you gotta learn kind of the anatomy of how the market works. All right, and then there are other external things that come into play. Like, for example, coins in general will go up in value during difficult times, whether it's a recession, downturn in the economy. I wouldn't even use crash because we never really experience a crash. It, there's no, there hasn't been a 1929 yet. 2008 was bad, but it wasn't, you know, Great Depression bad, okay, where people are, were out there at soup kitchens, you know, uh, in droves and everybody lost their job, all right? So uh, let's just take, for example, today's economy, which is very, very good. I'll be absolutely honest with you. Uh, for right now, I mean, you hear grumblings of a recession, but this is not, you know, a political thing. It's not economics, okay? It's economics in the you know, and coin investment terminology. But we have this one coin, the first surviving example at 15K. Now let's assume that this coin was purchased to be in a registry set. So there's only gonna be so many groups of people or actually individuals that participate in the registry set program, whether it's PCGS or NGC, okay? And just to kind of recap what the registry set program is, in a nutshell, simply means it's bragging rights, okay? You try and assemble the finest coins of each type for a specific series, or maybe it's a typeset. Maybe it's one of every denomination of every series of every design, okay? And it's all on a points graded scale. Sorry, I got holes in my arm, shirt armpit. Excuse me. But anyways, uh, yeah, we're going classy on this one. <laughs> so uh, let's, let's assume that... Um, for this particular case, okay, we got the first coin, $15,000. Now, in time, it's only going to be a matter of time before the second example exists. So we got one, we got two. It's really tiny, I know, but as you go along, you got one, two, three, four, five, um, and the pops, all right? So you might find a second example, okay, and the really big driving force of whether or not this coin goes up or down in value, um when it comes to population numbers, is simply, is it gonna be a made available on the secondary market? Is it going to be um, consigned to a heritage auctions, maybe Stax Bowers, a David Lawrence, even eBay, you know, things of that nature. It may not happen, okay? And what I like to tell people is about one out of every three coins at the top pop grade will somehow, some way, reach an auction house. So let's say we've gone through three examples so three three examples you know in time will be graded as an in state 69 for this date okay so if we start up here where it's 15k and let's say the uh the third coin ends up going to heritage auctions for sale so you start out at this kind of like height of the the coins value when it's only one so when you get to two and three of course that's going to diminish the value a little bit and that's just the nature that comes with modern coins especially. It's a very slippery slope and there's really kind of no uh, grounds to make a mistake when you're determining whether or not to sell your coin or not, all right? So you don't want to wait too long because you don't want the population numbers to fill up quickly. So you might see something to the effect of, okay, it's at 15K, it's not gonna take a, start, a sharp decline, okay, as some would expect. It's not gonna go from 15K for example, number one, and then drop down to around like 7,500 for example number three. Number two is gonna stay in a registry set. It's not even gonna sniff the secondary market. So it'll probably look something like this. So here's three. So you'd probably be looking at maybe a two to three thousand dollar decline. You'd probably be looking somewhere in a neighborhood for example number three, somewhere around maybe 13.5. All right, okay. So let's say in time we have examples four, five, six. So six more examples come out to the marketplace in which 
Over half of these are in registry sets. They'll never see the light of day of a secondary market until that person decides, you know what, I'm to my end of my life and I just want to sell these so that way my loved ones don't have to deal with it. So you're probably going to see more of a steep curve at this point because when you get to about five or six um, examples of a modern uh, top pop coin, that's when things really start to plummet. So you probably be down, probably go down a little bit more. You probably at this level be somewhere 10K, okay, through six examples of this one coin. Again, it really depends on, you know, how tough it is to find these extra examples to warrant a mid state 69. And then after the six example, we get into seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's say five years down the road, we actually hit 10. Okay. And I don't know where the registry set popularity kind of like factor is going to play in in numismatics five years from now. It may wane because it's more older generational people, uh, older collectors who like doing this sort of thing might drop off. People might decide, eh, you know what, it's really not for me. It really depends on where, I guess, the next generation of coin collectors come from. So you're really going to see a really sharp decline, okay? Probably somewhere between four to 5,000, if you're lucky, for the 10th surviving example. And then it'll continuously go down and then it'll plateau at a certain point. And you might be at a level by the time we have maybe 12 to 15 examples as a mid state 69, this will eventually become a thousand to $1,500 coin, maybe even a little bit lower. Again, it really depends on how many more become graded at that level. So how is it possible? Well, first and foremost, the way that you gotta look at this is, is there are only three ways that you can find this particular coin, okay? Number one, you go through pocket change and coin roll hunting, which through it all, it's it, you have about a less than a half a percent chance of finding a nice specimen of a 1982 zinc small date. And it may not even be gradable, all right? It, there's so few of them out there at that grade level straight out of change, okay? Your second option, would be to go through like mid sets, okay? I forgot how the scheme of the mid sets were in 1982, whether they not or not they had every single variant of the 1982 in the mix for that. I haven't actually owned a 1982 mid set in quite a while. Did they even make them in, I think it was 83, right? Where they didn't make them. That's why the 83 coins are so expensive. Um, so that would be your next best bet. All right, now to get one as a mint state 69 red, that's going to be pretty tough. Okay, mint sets don't necessarily equate to white glove kind of quality control handling at the mint. So the odds are pretty, pretty thin, even there too. Uh, your odds are probably less than 2% that you'll find a grade that warrants anything higher than a mint state 66. Okay, that's just the nature of the beast. So the final option, option number three in which you could find this coin or maybe any other coin during the 80s is to find an old uh, kind of like bank bag of BU quality 1982s, okay? Which may have an assortment of small dates and large date zincs in there. You just have to pick the finest one. Then your percentage goes up quite a bit more, you know, somewhere in that three to 5% chance that you'll find a coin worth grading. Now keep in mind the coins that are in these old canvas bags that are over 35 years old, okay, have been shifting around. They've moved quite often from one home to another, to one bank to another. So the likelihood that you're gonna find the premier specimens even in those bags is gonna be tough. But believe you me, there out of many tens of thousands of surviving examples of mint state red 1982 zinc small date cents, it's very likely that there's going to be at least a dozen, okay, that will grade out as a 69. It's just going to be a matter of when, not if, okay? And if any indication of today's kind of coin collector base is showing, that's going to be a possibility within the next five to 10 years. I feel like we're going to see between somewhere 
in that six to 12 region. So, you know, half a dozen to a dozen examples will grade at 69. Again, it really depends on the popularity of grading, um, you know, in five, 10 years. Okay, that plays a huge point. So that's what we're looking at as far as a kind of like generalized scope of where the value of this coin will be as more examples come out into the market. Now, what's really gonna crush the value of this coin is if let's say, because I was playing off the assumption that every third coin would get auctioned. Okay, what, it's, what if it's every other coin, all right, instead of every third? So let's say coin one, coin two, coin four, coin five, all right, more frequency out into the marketplace, it's gonna crush the value where it's gonna be under $10,000 by the time you get to example five and six. Because there's gonna be about a half a dozen to maybe eight big time players in the registry set game that they're gonna end up paying, you know, these big, huge amounts of money for this coin. Okay, with the understanding that it's not going to retain its value when they go to sell the registry set collection. It's just not gonna happen. So, $15,000, that's gonna be a one-time shot. The second example will not sell for 15K. Believe it, it's just not going to happen. Because when it got to the $15,600 price tag, you had probably three or four of these high player registry set people engaging in an active bidding war for that coin, okay? And that's why it's sold for so much damn money is because of that, all right? So if you guys realize that, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a heck of a treasure hunt. I'll just throw it out there. Number two, it's just, you're gonna have to pump a lot of, you're gonna dump and pump a lot of money grading multiple examples. You can't just play Lucky Ernie, send one coin out and expect it to be a 69. The, in order for this one example as a Mint State 69 to even exist, that person probably submitted 50 to 100 finest specimen coins out of a bag or mint set to achieve that. And they have spent many hundreds, if not a few thousand dollars in grading fees. Okay, so with that being said, should you even do this? Is this a worthwhile endeavor? And in most cases, if this is your first time grading and you enjoy the prospect of doing this, and it's like, man, I really want to do it, and you just you still don't understand the kind of like repercussions of the money aspect that it takes to get here on a coin that's only gonna decline as more specimens become graded at 69. No, it's not worth it. All right. It's not worth it. It's not going to be worth it today. There is one example. Okay, your best shot is find a mint state 70. And given the quality of the 1982 coins, especially zinc, where a lot of impurities will tend to bring plating blisters and bubbles on these coins, they're not going to survive long enough to justify the grade. Okay, one plating blister on this coin and I don't know if you guys saw the image, I'll show it to you guys here again. One plating blister will develop even larger in time, okay? All it takes is the right atmospheric conditions. And it doesn't matter how sonically sealed your PCGS slab holder is, you know, it's still affect by the atmospheric conditions, heat, cold, the constant changing of both throughout the year. You know, it's going to not only Tone, some of these, hey, there's a fly flying around here. It's going to sometimes make some sort of weird toning on a coin, but it'll also affect those plating blisters. You know, it, all it takes is one impurity between that zinc core and then the uh, copper um, plating on there. And that's how plating blister bubbles happen, is just the bad quality of the zinc uh, before it's plated. Okay, with the impurities make that happen and they just get worse over time. So anyways, that is the $15,000 1982 Lincoln cent. That is the $15,000 question, okay? You're not gonna get $15,000 for this coin other than right now with that first example, this thing is just gonna decline. So if we're sitting here having this conversation, should I do it when it's worth between like four to $7,000? No go, 
it's not going to be worth it because you're going to have to spend two or three thousand dollars to submit a whole grip of coins in order to get that. And what happens if you don't get a 69? 